Rather than lads, welcome back to Kosi's Arsenal Podcast. My name is Kosi. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are in all parts of the world. Welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to a brand new video. Now, according to reports in France, Arsenal are leading the rest to sign Lucas Paqueta. Edu wants the player ahead of Yuri Telemans. Although many people at Arsenal feel Yuri Telemans is the best central midfielder, is the player that we should be signing. Edu wants Lucas Paqueta and he's trying to agree a deal between us and Leon. Now, Newcastle at the moment are trying to verify if all the rumors and reports that there is a cut price for the player are actually true and they will decide on how to act after that. Moussa Diabe really linked with Arsenal as one of the um, as one of the uh, wingers Arsenal are interested in uh, signing this summer has decided that he will be si uh, he will be signing a new contract with Balevacuzen and he will be staying with them. That leaves us with Leroy Sane and Marco Asensio as the two priority wingers that are being linked with the club at the moment. Fabio Vieira is back in full training after uh, nursing that little injury that he had. No Tavares decision, uh, decision has been made by Arsenal. We will, we will learn him out with or without an obli um, ob obligation or option to sell uh to buy sorry and also uh granny jacka uh, there is a debate the arsenal should make him a captain once again talk to me in the comment section about this one should arsenal consider granny jacka uh, as a captain once again we know all the events that happened um you know way back during the unite emery era uh, and how he disrespected the arsenal shot and the arsenal uh, and the captain armband should we make him captain again talk to me about that one and let me know where on which side of the co on which side of the coin do you actually fall onto hit the like button let's get this video to 800 likes subscribe to the podcast as well it is massively uh, massively helpful because it's one of um uh, it's one of the things that really help out uh you know the channel and help out uh the podcast as well someone was calling but anyway let's get into it let's start off with the uh reports in france indicating that arsenal are leading the rest for lucas paqueta at the moment as we speak there is no other club interested in the player and is taking the is acting on their uh, on their interest seriously like arsenal now the last time i to i talked about lucas paqueta i, I told you Edu wants this signing done. He wants to get Lucas Paqueta at Arsenal because of the Brazilian connection, of course. And also, Edu believes Lucas Paqueta is the right player in the position. Now, the first thing here we are having, we've, we've talked about uh, this debate before. A couple of people at Arsenal believe Yuri Telemans is, this, uh, is the central midfielder that Arsenal should sign. According to Fabrizio Romano and David Onstein, he's still a player high on the list uh, of central midfielders. However, a section led by Edu also believe that um, Lucas Paqueta is the player that Arsenal should be uh, signing. Now, I think both Mikel Arteta and Edu are really working closely together. Uh, Lucas Paqueta and, and Yuri Telemans are both pl uh, players appreciated by the manager and, uh, uh, and and also by the sporting director and technical director uh, who is Edu. So, the priority, f uh, first and foremost, was Yuri Telemans, but now it looks like Edu is pushing and pushing to sign Lucas Paqueta first. So, Newcastle is the other club interested, uh, but more reliable reports are now saying that Newcastle are trying to inquire, are trying to ask around whether the rumors and reports of uh, a slashed price, a reduced price for Lucas Paqueta are actually true. So they will then act on their interest if uh, there is a cut price but if it doesn't happen if there is no cut price on that deal then uh, then us not remain uh, unopposed in the Lucas Paqueta deal. Now look um like i told you i do not have very concrete evidence on the prices being cut especially to that magnitude from 80 million euros to 40 million euros it is very very it is very very unbelievable of leon uh, unbelievable of john uh, of jean michael Aulas that he wants 80 million euros uh in january uh, in a player and then six months later or even uh, less than six months later he's asking for half the price it rarely happens with Jean Mikel Aulis. Now, Arsenal leading the rest, that is um uh, automatic. The fact that all other clubs have actually, uh, you know, 
been drawn away because of the prices uh, and because of the bidding war that they do not want to enter uh, it only makes sense and also the fact that Mikel Arteta has, re has been reportedly uh, talking to Lucas Paqueta to try and find out his interest in the project his interest um, in joining the Premier League it also makes us know a little bit have an advantage but leaving the rest yes we are but I don't think it is one that is really advanced at the moment so Lucas Paqueta, Edu wants this one. It looks like Edu uh, is pushing to sign this one, just like um, uh, Mikel Arteta and the rest of the team want to sign Yorick Telemans. I won't be very surprised if, uh, if if Lucas Paqueta signs because of Edu's influence. But one thing I'm going to ask here is if if Yorick Telemans needs a player to get out of the door uh, for, for, for him to come into Arsenal, then... Lucas Paqueta might need, must need as well a player to be sold to come through the door. So I'm still waiting for anyone to come out and say Arsenal can sign Lucas Paqueta without selling, which would be, a, a, you know, which would be something that won't make any sense for me. But anyway, Arsenal leading Lucas Paqueta deal at the moment as things stand. Now Mosa Diabe is a been a uh, Mosa Diabe, uh, the winger at Balabakuzen has decided that he will be staying at Germany in Germany he will be staying with the uh, with the German club uh, for another season he might sign a new contract Arsenal have been massively interested in him because he can double um, as a right winger and also as a left winger um, Newcastle have also done a lot of work um, in terms of trying to sign him right from uh, the beginning of the transfer window they thought he could have been the marquee signing of the summer however now at the moment Moussa Diabe has just confirmed that he's going to be playing another season with Bale Vakuzen so Arsenal's interest in uh, Moussa Diabe seemingly um, is dwindling it should be done and dusted by now I don't think we should uh, we should be monitoring this one anymore so that leaves us with Leroy Sane and Marco Asensio as the two very very realistic uh, targets in the market unless Arsenal are going to uh, point to other names probably uh jared bowen coming back on onto uh the scene probably pedro neto because in, in the past few hours i've seen reports that arsenal um have been inquiring and asking around uh about the availability of uh, of world's winger pedro neto so pedro neto makes a lot of sense right at the moment marco asensio makes a lot of sense and leroy sane makes a lot of sense at the moment as mosa diabe is off the radar he will be staying with Balevacuzen in germany fabio viera is back in training full training um i would love to show you something i would love to show you the pictures uh of fabio viera there we are fabio viera is back in full training now uh he did not play it for us in germany uh when we were playing fc nuremberg and he also didn't play for us no in um uh, in the first game of the uh, of um of, of the preseason which was Ipswich. He also didn't play uh, in the first game of our um, US tour, which was against Everton. We are, It is highly unlikely that we'll play against Orlando City on Thursday, but he might feature against uh, Chelsea. That is uh, in the last game of our US tour. So uh, we're waiting. Fabio Vieira, very, very interesting to see him back. Um, he's been highly spoken about. So many people speaking huge things huge uh, expectations around him let's hope he doesn't disappoint back in full training with the likes of uh um uh, ben white as well now granny jacker i want us to talk about granny jacker uh there is an ongoing debate around the captaincy Mikel Arteta feels odegaard has the uh, has the qualities uh for the next arsenal captain and we are not here to talk about martin odegaard but we are to talk about uh granny jacka now a section of arsenal fans feel granny jacka should be named as arsenal captain and they're basing on a, a, a few factors one um the age factor that is one of the most experienced and uh, uh senior players in the team and also the fact that he's been really i think I, I, we could call it you know rejuvenated under Mikel Arteta uh, and um, I think he's one of the most improved players of the Mikel Arteta era if we if we are not 100% wrong about this then we are 100% right about this Granny Jaka could be the most improved player of uh, of, um, of, 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 of of the Mikel Arteta era now 
does he deserve to be captain? That is the question. Now, when I look at Jaka and the situation uh, around him, I think about uh, I think about Jaden Nissen. When Jurgen Klopp took over Liverpool, a couple of signings that had been made by the uh, the ex regimes, um, uh, you know, managing Liverpool were actually dead wood by then. The likes of uh, Stuart Downing, Andy Carroll. Um, I think that you had the likes of uh, um, uh, Daniel Sturridge, uh, Dijon Lovren. All those players became absolute deadwood. Absolute deadwood. But there was one player that stood out for Jurgen Klopp, and that was Granny Jaka. Oh, sorry, that was Jaden Innocent. And when you look at Mikel Arteta and what he's trying to do, it's very, very similar to what Jurgen Klopp has done at Liverpool. Many players in, the, in this Arsenal side, Messi Rozel, loved by the Arsenal fans, Skobran Mustafi, hated by the fans, um, the likes of um, Pelimrik Aubameyang, all those players, when Mikel Arteta arrived, they formed the core, um, the, co the core structure of Arsenal Football Club. But slowly and steadily and surely, Mikel Arteta has driven them out one by one um, and they're no more. There are still other players that you think about, but the, the players that you think formed uh, the strongest core of, uh, uh, core of Arsenal, uh, Arsenal Football Club uh, during the Unai, Unai Emery era and, um, uh, and the Freddie Lundberg semi-era uh, and also uh, the Arsene Wenger era, most of them have been sold. Most of them have, have had term, uh, contracts terminated uh, and many of them are, are still going to leave the club this summer. Granny Jaka stands out as a player that Mikel Arteta came in, loved him absolutely, believed in him absolutely, and is not willing to part ways with him. Now, get me right, he can't be, he can't be our Jordan Anderson. He's a senior player. He's taken. He's, he's served a long time at Arsenal, and his his leadership in the side is one to be appreciated, right? His leadership in this Arsenal side is one to be uh, cherished because this is a very young side that will need a player like Xhaka to be around, guide them, uh, give them some instructions. But in my opinion, is Xhaka really a Jordan Anderson? That is the first question. And that's why I personally uh, would prefer him away from the squad rather than part of the squad. Not because he's the worst player ever. Like I said, he's the most improved player under, uh, under Mikel Arteta. But honestly, let's speak about it. Xhaka is... I feel... I, I, at times when he loses his head, at times when he makes those silly decisions, I feel he is a liability and he costs the team a lot. At times when he's consistent, at times when uh, he decides to play good football, you feel he is an okay player and a very, very valuable asset in terms of serving the team uh, longest and also being around this team uh, and also having the very, very good, uh, you know, very good uh, leadership skills in the dressing room and the player, uh, players believe in and listen to. So, should he be captain once again? With the decision of him being captain, I don't think Arsenal should do that. Chasing Pelimir Kabamiang to Barcelona only explains the factor that Mikel Arteta doesn't, uh, you know, doesn't deal with uh, any kind of, you know, uh, breach of the uh, of, uh, of the high standards that he has actually set, and those standards were actually broken uh, before Mikel Arteta, uh, you know, came in. I think to set a good example. Xhaka can't stay around the squad, but definitely he cannot be captain again. I mean, just for the standards of the club, he cannot be captain again. No, he can stay. I'm not. I'm not. I'm no longer obsessed with the fact that he should be leaving. He can't stay, but captain again, Xhaka. No. Arsenal have also decided that uh, Nurta Virus will be going out on loan. He has an agreement with Olympic Marseille as Alexander Zdjenko uh, completes his move. Tavares will be on his way out. Speak to you in the next one.